Today's video is brought to you by Brilliant, a wonderful website and app built on the idea of active problem solving. Because it takes more to learn something than just watching it, to really learn to do something, you have to do it. And that's why Brilliant has thousands of lessons on the platform for its lifelong learners, with new exclusive content being added every month. And as any working professionals can tell you, Brilliant is just the best way to learn maths, science, or computer skills interactively. For example, have you ever wanted to learn how to compute a program, but you were put off by intimidating opaque coding language? Well, Brilliant can help you learn how to do that without having to dig deep through the weeds of coding syntax. Instead, you get fun, low-pressure, interactive challenges that teach you the fundamentals of computer language. And on Brilliant, it's not just about memorizing or regurgitating facts for a test. You could just pick a course that you're interested in and give it 20 minutes every day. If you're feeling stuck, afraid you made a mistake, it's not an issue. You can just read the explanations to find out more and learn at your own pace. It's college-level content and it doesn't cost a fortune. So if you're a lifelong learner who wants to give Brilliant a try, they've got good news. You guys can get a free trial for Brilliant at brilliant.org slash side projects. And as another bonus, Brilliant has given the first 200 people through the door 20% off the cost of an annual premium subscription. So go take advantage of that deal. Thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring. And now today's video. In the 1960s, a brilliant scientist predicted that within a hundred years, computers would be twice as powerful, a thousand times larger, and so expensive that only the five richest kings of Europe could own them. Of course, that scientist was Professor Fring from The Simpsons, and the prediction was a flashback written in 1996, so it's no surprise that his thoughts on the future of computers were hilariously wrong. While the means of describing a computer's power or speed have changed over time, the most common measure of computer performance for supercomputers is flops, or floating point operations per second. The world's first supercomputer was the Cray CDC 6600. At the time, it was three times faster than the previous record holder, with a performance of three megaflops. Now, that might sound like a lot of operations per second, especially as floating point operations are complex operations. However, an average modern processor will have a maximum performance of over one teraflop, and high-end graphics cards will perform orders of magnitude more operations than the computer's CPU. Now, this shouldn't be a huge shock to you. The simplified version of Moore's Law is the technology doubles roughly every 18 months. With the Cray 6600 having been built in 1964, technology would have doubled 32 times since then. 2 to the power of 32 is over 4 billion, so it's no surprise that today's average computers are over a million times more powerful than the 1964 supercomputer. But that's just an average computer. What about today's most powerful computers? Started in 1993, the Top 500 project ranks the world's 500 most powerful non-distributed computer systems. As the name suggests, a distributed system utilizes multiple different machines connected over a network to work towards a singular goal. Because the goal is to track the most powerful supercomputers in the world, it makes sense to exclude anything that isn't a single machine. The list is updated twice each year, once in June and once in November. Each new list is released to coincide with an international supercomputer conference, and its goal is to provide a reliable means to detect and track trends in supercomputing. Each top 500 list includes the name and model of the computer, its manufacturer, processing speeds, year of creation, and the site where the computer is located. It also tracks the operating systems, but unsurprisingly, the computers are almost all using some variety of Linux. Of the top 500 most powerful supercomputers in the world, 149 of them are located in the US. That's an impressive feat, since Japan is next in line with only 32. But it's not nearly as impressive as China, who tops the list with 173. With it being June at the time of recording, ah, not quite, it just turned into July, the newest top 500 list has just come out. So we can give you the most up-to-date rankings, which are going to get out of date very, very quickly. And it's a good thing, because as of this month, there's a new champion. Summit is a supercomputer developed by IBM for use at Oak Ridge Leadership Computing Facility, a facility at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. It takes up an estimated 9,400 square feet, that's 873 meters, and was the end result of a $325 million contract from the United States Department of Energy. However, not all that money went towards Summit. The contract was actually for a pair of computers, the other being named Sierra. Sierra is housed at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory 
in California. It's operated by the National Nuclear Security Administration is used to run nuclear weapon simulations, so there's not really a whole lot more we're able to say about it because of, you know, classified stuff. Besides, Sierra was the less powerful of the two computers anyway. When Summit was completed in 2018, it stole the first place spot on the top 500 from China's Sunway Taihu Light. The Chinese supercomputer had maintained its dominance for two years before being overtaken by Summit's 50% increase in performance. Summit performs at 148 petaflops, one petaflop equaling 1,000 teraflops. With the Nuclear Security Administration having received the nuclear weapon simulator, Oak Ridge's expensive new toy was tasked with civilian scientific research. Summit provides scientists and researchers the opportunity to solve complex tasks in the fields of energy, artificial intelligence, human health, and other research areas. It has been used for earthquake simulations, extreme weather simulations, material science experiments, genomics, and for predicting the lifetime of neutrinos. There was actually a third computer that was part of the Department of Energy's plan, although this contract went to Intel and Cray. Named Aurora, the original computer was intended to release at approximately the same time as Summit and have similar performance. However, delays combined with a change in the project's scope have led to it not being completed. Aurora is planned to be completed later this year and installed at the Argonne National Laboratory in Illinois. It's expected to cost $500 million and is projected to have twice the performance of Frontier, a supercomputer that we're going to discuss shortly. Aurora's planned functions include research on low-carbon technologies, subatomic particles, cancer, and cosmology. Assembly of Fugaku began in December of 2019, and by May 13th, 2020, it was finally up and running. With a performance of 422 petaflops, Fugaku had nearly tripled the performance of Summit. It was an absolute beast in terms of speed, and it surpassed the performance of the next four top supercomputers combined. Fugaku is housed at the Riken Center for Computational Science in Kobe, Japan, and was produced by Fujitsu Limited. Fugaku is an alternate name for Mount Fuji, by the way. Fun fact. After Riken announced the supercomputer's name in mid-2019, they also unveiled its official logo, which depicts Mount Fuji as a symbol of Fugaku's high performance and the wide range of its users. According to Nikai, in 2018, the total cost of developing the supercomputer would be approximately 130 billion yen, or $1 billion. The statement about the wide range of users wasn't just corporate puffery either. Fugaku has been used to forecast weather and predict tsunamis in real time. It has been able to evaluate fuel economy and flight speeds for aircraft. It was even used to simulate the spread of COVID-19 and run research on COVID face masks. Now, while the top 500 is the list that we've been focusing on for the episode today, there are other means of measuring computer performance by testing different kinds of workloads. Not only did Fugaku rank number one in the top 500, it also claimed the top spot in the Graph 500, HPL AI, and the HPCG benchmark. It was the first supercomputer to ever lead all four rankings at the same time. In November of 2020, Fugaku would receive an upgrade, increasing the number of processors. No other supercomputer was even close to matching its performance performance, but, you know, there's no harm in trying to stay on top. And it did stay on top for two full years, until being finally dethroned in June 2022 by Frontier. Finally, we end our list with the newest and fastest supercomputer in the world, and the world's first exascale computer. Exascale means that the computer has a full exaflop. That's a thousand petaflops of performance, or in this case, 1.102 exaflops. It has a measured peak, though, of 1.685 exaflops and a theoretical peak of two exaflops, making it ten times more powerful than its predecessor, Summit, and more than twice as powerful as the previous record holder. Just in case the prefixes are getting a little confusing, one exaflop is one quintillion floating point operations per second. And surely, that's gonna make it much easier for you to visualize. If Gaku was a beast, then Frontier is the entire pack of beasts that surpassed the combined performance of the next eight most powerful supercomputers. Like Summit, Frontier is hosted at the Oak Ridge Leadership Computing Facility in Tennessee. The computer cost $600 million to build and takes up 7,300 square feet, that's 680 square meters. It was manufactured by Hewlett Packard, or more specifically, their subsidiary Cray. 
That's right, the makers of the world's first supercomputer nearly 60 years ago have once again claimed the title with the HPE Cray AX235A. Frontier is intended for scientific research, with the official website stating, Frontier users will model the entire lifespan of a nuclear reactor, uncover disease genetics, and build on recent developments in science and technology to further integrate artificial intelligence with data analytics and modeling and simulation. With the supercomputer just becoming operational, we'll have to wait to see what incredible feats it's gonna perform. But Frontier is also topping more charts than just the top 500. It took the number one spot on the Green 500, a similar biannual list that measures the most efficient supercomputers. It may have 10 times the processing capabilities of Summit, but it uses less than two times the energy. When rogue artificial intelligence finally goes insane and eradicates humanity, it'll be nice to know that we designed it with the planet's survival in mind. Frontier wasn't the only EX235A to debut in 2022. Hewlett Packard has provided the components to the CSE data center in Kajani, Finland. The computer, named Lumi, isn't even completed yet, and it has already debuted at number three on the top 500. However, even once completed, it's not projected to take the number two spot, let alone number one. The project's expected to cost 144.5 million euros or 151 million dollars and is co-funded by the EuroHPC joint undertaking and the Lumi Consortium, which consists of 10 different European nations. Lumi may be powerful, but it has different goals than raw processing capabilities. Lumi is to be powered using 100% hydroelectric energy. Rather than expensive and complex cooling systems to deal with the immense heat generated by a supercomputer, Lumi's heat is going to be captured and used to heat nearby buildings. Frontier may have ranked at the top of the Green 500 when it launched, but it seems Lumi is destined to steal that position once it's fully operational. Dojo is a supercomputer designed by Tesla to help handle the massive amount of video data generated by the self-driving cars. The data is fed to a neural network that will use all of that information to improve their car's driving ability. There's a lot of hype surrounding Dojo, much of it from Elon Musk himself, because of course it is. Separating hype from reality can be quite difficult. There are countless news stories that are constantly recirculated around social media, making incredible claims such as how Dojo will revolutionize artificial intelligence and that it is the fastest supercomputer in the world with a potential performance of up to 1.8 exaflops. Because these articles are so prevalent, it would be remiss not to give Dojo a mention. Most of the concrete facts we know about Dojo came from Tesla's AI day in 2021 when they revealed Dojo to the world. Or at least they revealed their proprietary processing chip and a one tile of what will eventually become the supercomputer. Dojo unfortunately failed to make the top 500 because it's not actually built yet. The computer is supposed to be completed this year and may be revealed at Tesla's upcoming AI day, but the grandiose claims have cooled down a bit. Based on estimates regarding Dojo's actual capabilities, it will probably make the top 10 or even the top 5, but barring some revolutionary development, it will not be the most powerful computer in the world. It's believed that the Dojo is capable of 1.1 exaflops of AI compute, but that is very different from regular exaflops using the standard Linpack benchmark system. So, uh, what does all of this mean for the actual computational abilities of Dojo? Well, we don't know. There's a good chance we'll find out later this year when it's finally revealed. We've continued to see the performance of supercomputers double or triple on a nearly annual basis, and there's no reason to believe this is going to stop anytime soon. Until technology has advanced to a point where we can upload human consciousness to the cloud, there will always be more work to be done. It's just important to remember that the computers on the top 500 are only the computers we know about. Despite already leading the world in quantity of supercomputers, there have been reports for over a year that China secretly developed supercomputers using their own technology. Frontier may officially be the first exascale supercomputer, but it is possible that China won that race by over a year and has been operating the computer in secret to avoid US sanctions. As of May of this year, China is allegedly home to two exascale computers, but there's no way to substantiate these reports.